things can happen in the workplace. We're going to be watching as workmen are assigned to perform a task inside a confined space. Let's find out what's going on. Uh, Bill? Uh, Bill? Come here, will you? Uh, Bill, we've got a job that we've got to get done. We've got a job that we've got to get done today, and I cannot allow any overtime on this. Understood? Mm, okay. So what do we have to do? First of all, you've got to get rid of that coffee. There's no food or drink allowed in this area. You know that. Okay, now you're going to have to clean out tiny room tank number five. And I mean clean. I've got a subcontractor coming in here tomorrow to cut a portal in the bottom of her, and there can't be any sludging there at all. Understood? Yeah. Oh, um, this is Jimmy. Jimmy, this is Phil. Uh, he's a new laborer. I just hired him yesterday. You tell him what to do. So what are you waiting for? An invitation? Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Old Oscar. He was pretty high strung. I was waving that clipboard around. And he sleeps with it under his pillow. You don't say much, do you, Jimmy? Oh, it's okay. Uh, you, uh, why don't you just uh, untie this rope? We'll get to work, huh? Uh, we'll see at the ninth end, then. What did you say? Perdone, no hablo inglés. Yo trabajo bien. You don't speak English. Well, no, I mean, that's okay. Uh, you get to go inside. Well, I do it, but I got seniority, you know. Okay, now, when you go in there, You've got to wear this breathing apparatus. Because that tire means some pretty strong stuff. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Since the hole's too small for you to fit into, put the equipment on your back. You crawl in the hole, and then I'll hand it down to you and strap it on before you go down. Selection of proper respiratory protection should have been made, 
and the physical limitations and work procedures considered. Since this was a vertical entry, the entrant should have worn a harness hooked to a retrieval line and mechanical device such as a tripod and winch. This rescue system ensures that the attendant can pull an entrant to safety. Training of entrants and attendants must also ensure understanding of proper confined space safety guidelines. In this case, a language barrier resulting in the inability to communicate the dangers of the space may have caused the incident. Evaluation by a qualified person before entry is also required to reduce risks for employees. Sam is employed by the Water Distribution Division, charged with checking meters throughout the city. He has a heavy workload ahead of him. 76 accounts must be read today. Like, what do you want? I'm in a hurry here. Yeah, um, I want to know if you'll come over to uh, see the fight tonight because I'm... Um... Yeah, Frank, what do you want? I'll be there, okay? I've got like 40 more stops to make before I can be anywhere, okay? could be with his friends tonight. He could be watching the fight, having a good time. But Sam won't be coming home at all. He was pronounced dead after efforts to revive him proved unsuccessful. Before entering a confined space, the atmosphere should always be tested. After entry, regular retesting or continuous monitoring is necessary. All employees who work in confined spaces should be aware of the potential hazards, the possible emergencies, and the procedures to be followed prior to entering a confined space. These procedures include atmospheric testing to ensure adequate oxygen supply, adequate ventilation, and the control of toxic air contaminants. Employees and supervisors are trained in the selection and proper use of respiratory equipment. When working in a confined space, adequate ventilation is used to control a hazardous atmosphere. There are two kinds of mechanical ventilation, local exhaust ventilation and general ventilation. Local ventilation captures contaminants at their point of origin and removes them. General ventilation flushes the atmosphere by supplying and exhausting large volumes of air. In this horrible incident, air quality was not tested prior to entry, and the confined space did not have adequate ventilation. Because the atmosphere was not tested and reported on a confined space permit, the entrant was unaware that methane and carbon dioxide were present until it was too late. Glenn's job today is oxyacetylene welding inside an old reactor vessel. Since the reactor tested oxygen deficient and the plant hygienist noticed particulates inside the reactor, Glenn is wearing an airline respirator. 
showed that this cylinder, filled with pure oxygen, was attached to Glenn's airline respirator. Pure oxygen is never used for welding. That's one reason threads on an oxygen cylinder are different from those on grade D breathing air, which is the appropriate cylinder for this application. Whoever misconnected this bottle used an adapter to overcome the safety engineering. A leak in his airline hose with a sudden rush of oxygen caused his face piece to burst into flames. Even though Glenn was an experienced welder, failure to pre-inspect his gear before starting work resulted in a face full of fire and pain. People working in and around confined spaces owe it to themselves and co-workers to be aware of confined space hazards. Pre-entry planning and adherence to safety measures save lives. Before entering a confined space, check to see that the permit is complete, signed, and authorized. Barriers are erected outside the space. Input lines are capped, disconnected, or blanked. Lockout tagout of all energized equipment is in place. The space is ventilated. All approved PPE is on site. Everyone understands the emergency action plan and rescue procedures. To verify atmospheric quality inside a confined space, testing is performed from the outside, and periodic testing continues as long as the space is occupied. All personal protective equipment and emergency breathing systems that might be needed must be available on site and worn or used as necessary. Safe confined space entry requires attention to every detail and is a team effort. So be prepared, be alert, and be a team player.